Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-I-H-G-F-E-D-C-B-A. Welcome to another video in Spanish Essentials. Today we're going to focus on the Spanish alphabet, as well as give you some new tools to share some details about yourself. So the first part of this video is going to be bland and boring, but the reason for it is that if you visit any Spanish-speaking countries, it's very common that your American name is not going to be well understood. And for that reason, you might need to spell out your name so that it can be um, clear and understood by who, the person you're speaking with. Similarly, you might run into people who have Spanish or Latino names that they that you might want to know the spelling of. and so. You could equally ask them how that's spelled and, and then uh, go from there. So the Spanish alphabet is similar to, to our alphabet in English. Um, and I'm going to go through it quickly and do the pronunciation of each character. Um, listen to the letters in your name, pull those out, and pause, rewind, and replay the video. And practice, just focus right now on your the letters in your name. Focus on your name. So here we are. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, N, Y, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, V, X, Y, Z. Now, um, I skipped over these grayed out characters for a reason. They have an interesting story. They used to be part of the Spanish alphabet, but they were removed by the governing body of the Spanish language, the uh, Real Academia, because they thought it'd just be simpler to have only single lettered characters. And if ever the case where the C and the H, for example, were to be combined, then it would just be a grammar rule that they'd be pronounced differently. So the C and the H pronounced together, uh, they have this che sound. It's so like cheddar cheese, a, a word in, in Spanish is el gancho, the hook you might hang your hat on. We have the double L, which is the eye, pronounced eye, which in English um, would be, the word is she, but in Spanish it would be ella, not ella, but ella. And then the double R, R. The rolling of the R's, the infamous um, rolling of the R's. El perro, for example, the dog. And um, you would you would spell your name nowadays by saying C H, so C H instead of Che. But uh, but I, but the pronunciation still holds true. You still have to follow these pronunciation rules. All right. So the goal is to be able to use those letters to spell your name. So if you need to go back and review the pronunciation of those letters, to pull out the letters in your name, you need to do that right now before we continue. So the question you're going to be asked, or perhaps the question you might ask, is ¿Cómo se escribe tu nombre? You might remember that ¿Cómo means how? And then nombre is a similar word to the English version, which is name. It's, it's more difficult to see, but I think that you may have already learned that in Spanish. So how your name, como se escribe tu nombre, is how is your name written? How is it written, your name? It's a little tossed around, but it means how is your name written? So the focus here, se escribe, means is written, or it is written. So we can grab se escribe and then just put the letters of our name afterwards and say, well, it's written, se escribe, followed by the letters of our name. So let's grab some letters. We've got the name Gavin, a up and coming name, very, very common these days. And if someone were to ask Gavin, um, hola Gavin, como se escribe tu nombre? And he says, oh, well, bueno, mi nombre, my name, mi nombre, we're changing the two to mi. Mi nombre se escribe G-A-U-E-I-N. G-A-U-E-I-N. G-A-V-I-N. If Sarah was spelling her name, she would say, um, Sarah se escribe, Sarah is written, Sarah se escribe S-A-R-A-H. S-A-R-A-H. And lastly, we have Mark. Mark se escribe M-A-R-K. 
So the goal is to go and grab the letters in the alphabet that make up your name and be able to respond to this question. ¿Cómo se escribe tu nombre? Be able to say se escribe followed by the letters in your name. All right, so a couple more tools I'm going to leave you with. If you're traveling around, the second question you might be asked is, where are you from? And the way to ask that in Spanish is, ¿De dónde eres? Where are you from? ¿De dónde eres? Of where are you is what it literally means. ¿De dónde eres? Now, ¿De dónde eres? is the informal, normal way to ask where someone is from. And ¿De dónde es usted? You recognize usted is that formal you. That's how you would ask someone in a more respectful or formal way. Regardless of which one you're asked or which one you ask, the response is going to be, Soy de. I am from. Soy de. And in this case, soy de Carolina del Norte. I'm from Carolina del Norte, from North Carolina. And so soy is super useful. And if you don't remember anything from this video, you should know soy. It's used to say where you're from, your name, perhaps your country of origin. Uh, soy de los Estados Unidos. I am of or from the United States. Soy Felipe. I'm Felipe. I'm Philip. Soy americano. I am American. You could even say soy milk, but you'd be saying I am milk, not the beverage. So if you don't think my jokes are funny, they are not going to get any better all year. So today in this video, you should have learned how to respond to the question, ¿Cómo se escribe tu nombre? How is your name written? By using se escribe, it is written, followed by the letters of your name. Also, we learned de dónde eres and de dónde es usted, two ways of asking or perhaps two ways that you might be asked where you're from. And your common response is going to use the word soy or yo soy. I am from de, followed by the country of origin or your city or, or something like that. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email and I'll see you guys in the next one.